Hi, my name is Terry Lee from Sweet Pea Papers and the Sweet Pea Papers Facebook group. And this is video five in our series on uh, Dragon Dreams. And we're going to be using the uh, Dragon Destiny Mega Project Pack by Victoria Designs. Now, if you look below the video in the text, there's a 60% off coupon for anything at Victoria Designs in this coupon. I say coupon, but it's a coupon that, um, and it doesn't expire. So keep the link and, uh, or write down the code, either one, and uh, you can get the 60% off on anything in their shop, their Etsy shop, um, forever. All right. So today, um, so far, we have uh, pages one and two. Nope. We have pages one and two, three and four. Today we're going to do five. And then we have six, seven is the flip down, eight, nine. We're going to do ten today. And then we're also going to talk about printing on the envelopes to put in the top pockets. If we have time, enough time to do another page after that, then we will. Um, if not, we will call it a day at these three topics. Okay, so let's start with page five. And remember, we have to make a thumb hole for our pocket on this page. Um, in video four, I made a mistake and was going to do five, page five. I forgot it needed to be a shorter page. And I also did that this time but uh, it should be okay. I just have to re-ink the top and, um, and or the bottom, whichever we trim off. And um, we're going to put the thumb, uh, thumb hole on um, and we'll have plenty of room to do that. So let's start with page five, which is all of this right here. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Hopefully not mixing it in with everything else. So page five is going to be easy because we need to leave room over here. We're just going to do a page with a belly band. Yeah, it looks like we can trim off some of the top. Um, this is the paper, so let me remeasure that real quick. Forgot it was one of the shorter ones. Why is this not wide enough? Oh, I know why. Because it is supposed to be a card. Okay, let me put on hold and grab another paper. The right size. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to put a belly band on and I decided to use another piece of the same paper. Um, we're going to cut it one inch wide. And then let's cut the size. Now we're not going to need to leave, we're not going to need to fold this over and leave extra space. It's just a writing card. So all we need is eight and a half. I don't know why I'm trying to measure it the other way. I just got in one of those new uh, Tim Holtz Decalage um, trimmers, so hopefully that will be easier in the future than uh, trying to tear pages. Make that edge that looks like you tore the paper. Okay, so let's make sure this is going to be okay. Oh, that's right. This one's short.
good grief. And this was supposed to be the five minute page. The other one was going to be a five minute page too, but I made some changes, of course, at the last minute on how we're going to do it. So now let's double check it now. That means we're going to have to trim the card more than I thought. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to ink the belly band. And then when we make the card, all we have to do is take into account for the glue at the top and the bottom to make it a little bit shorter. And then we also have to take into account the height of the page. So we're going to glue this on. We're going to try to eyeball it for the center. You don't have to put a ton of glue, you're just holding on um, the um, a thin writing card. It looks good. where I moved it. Okay. Let's measure for our writing card. And then we'll be able to put it on the page. So we want to keep the bottom of the card. So we do this just like any other one. In the pockets or whatever. I have to cut off the top of the scroll. The bottom isn't scrolled, so it won't look weird. Hopefully. Yeah, that looks fine. I'm building up quite a collection of scraps. Believe it or not, I am running low on uh, picture pages. Looks like we need to take just a hair off. A hair is a little bit more than a skosh or a smidge. <laughs> Apparently not quite enough. I guess I should have taken a bit. Alright, if this doesn't go through, alright, that looks like it should be fine. Oh, I know what I did want to show you, now that I think about it. And that is how I've been doing the back. So let's ink the edges front and back.
Remember, we're just doing a fine line. We're not necessarily trying to highlight the corners, even though I did there just a little bit by accident. Okay. Now, what I've been doing on the backs is I've been stenciling them using both the blue and the purple. The purple here. And do the blue first. This is my fish scale stencil. It doesn't quite reach across, does it? Huh. Well, apparently this is a bad one to show you. Plus the scales go down. So I don't want to do just the center. Well, I guess I might have to think of something else to do on the back of this. Find a bigger stencil or do some stamping or, or something like that. So I'll figure that out. Let's go ahead and put this in the... Uh, in the book. I know some people do the whole back of the paper, um, however it is just a sheet of paper. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I haven't had the trouble so far, let's put it that way, cross your fingers. Let's see, I know this is a diamond pattern, but I feel like these splotches should go at the bottom. Go figure, I have no idea. Let's put this in. The border all the way around. I'll put something on here. Thumb hole. This looks crooked to me. I almost forgot. Let's get the card out so we don't accidentally thumb hole the card, which is what I almost did. This is what I was doing on the back. Oh, it looks like I didn't go out of the way all the way to the edge on this one. However, um, it wasn't way, way, way in the center like the other one. So I'll have to decide what to do. Okay, so let's put this in here. It's a one inch hole punch. I'm going to put it halfway in and we're going to put it halfway down. And then this is already inked, so we don't have to worry about putting this back in, even though we did it on the other ones. So maybe we should do it on this one.
wonder why that one isn't. Oh, because this is sticking out farther. sure we haven't glued our pocket shut. And the front of the book is this way, so let's put our card in right side up, facing the front. I guess it helps if you don't have your hand on the pocket. There we go. Just like that. And now let's put our writing card on. We don't want it to stick out over the edge of the pages of the page. So let's line it up. There we go. And that's our page. I'd like to put something down the center, maybe a black ribbon, since we're going to be using black ribbon to tie it shut. That would be nice. So I'm going to think about that, and then we'll come back to it. Now the next thing that we're going to do is talk about making the cards for these top pockets. Now, not this isn't the first one. The first one is back here okay and you'll notice I cut out with this cutter um, a black piece for the front and the back and glued it on there and then that way it works as the little reinforcement and it'll match the black ribbon okay so printing on envelopes Now, there's a couple different things. The first thing is the method. The method is to use repositional glue and glue the envelope to the page and then when you're done printing on it just remove it this one came out beautiful on this side so this is the repositional glue and the brand is uh, scrapbook adhesives and these are called easy dots repositional and um, did I say glue well I guess it is glue but it's, it comes out as a tape, as little dots. Okay, so what I do, now this has been printed several times, so you can't really see. But what I do is I print the image out once. Then I laid the open envelope over the image where I wanted the picture to be. And this turned out so pretty. I was so upset on the other side. Okay, and then I, this is darker but it was this color the first time I printed it through. Then I flipped it over, and when I flipped it over, to you know, pulled it off, the repositional dots, which I've never had this happen before, um, tore the envelope right along where I had them positioned. And it wasn't even where they overlapped the sticky. So I think what happened is these are really thin envelopes, these uh, manila colored ones or cream colored ones. So I think what happened is the, they just weren't thick enough. And also the other thing is being a, a cream colored envelope, you can see the difference in the colors. So I didn't like the color. All right as what, you know, either, once I saw this one. So then I went in my cabinet, so this is a no-go. Even though we could have closed it and put our paper inside and everything would have been cool. 
Um, the second one that I did worked out perfect and it was one of these white business envelopes. Oh, the repositional tape. Um, you uh, just rub them off, the little dots off. You just rub them off and then um, you just wipe it off the page. Just make sure you get all of it. And when you're using envelopes, when you're doing like this on the page, you can kind of have it like, you know, go like this and wrinkle all up real easy. So hold your hands like this and then just rub the dots off in between. Move your hand down, rub the dots off, etc., etc. So now this is what I use, which is a heavier paper, Manila, I'm sorry, white envelope which it doesn't matter because we're printing all over it, so it doesn't matter that it was white, which I didn't think about in the beginning. Um, the only difference is on the back, I sealed the envelope. I have to touch it up right there a little bit, but I sealed the envelope with the tape. See right here too, because the tape doesn't go all the way across, which I never understood. Um, and that turned out perfect. There's more reposition tape. It rolls up into little balls. And um, so we can use these as cards, but not put our paper inside. However, I think even if we take the tape off, we would still be able to um, print on it open. I didn't try it because I ran out of time. So this is what I did. I put the envelope on where I could get the most of the picture that I wanted. So remember it's not open like the other envelope so we won't be able to get the complete image like we did on the cream colored envelope. So I put it here to get the most that I could. Make sure your, your envelope is straight to where you want your image to be. I used the repositional tape and I put it all the way around the back side. Even more dots. Little things get everywhere. But they're just like little rolled up rubber. Um, put the dots around the whole back side. Stuck it on the paper where I wanted it. Ran it through my printer because remember I had printed it once so I knew where the picture was that I wanted. Then I glued it down, taped it down, stuck it down, ran it through the printer again. However, this time you have to put it in, in most printers, front side down because you um, print on the back side because the papers feed in this way and then come out that way. So you, it really actually prints on the back side of the paper as it feeds the paper in. Most printers. There are a few that don't. Um, that would be your top loading printers. Um, and then I flipped this paper over after the first mistake on the cream folder. And I just place this in the center, use the dots to adhere it after removing the dots from this side, ran it through the printer face down again and came out with this. Now this I can stencil, it'll be cool. Alright, so now we're not going to be able to use the same plan that we were going to use, so we are going to ink around these. Um, and I'm going to use the white so the white comes out white. Because we printed the kit out on white papers, even though we're using the cream colored envelopes, manila colored, obviously, manila folders, and the cream colored small envelopes. So let's see what it looks like inked because I didn't do one. Yeah, I 
think this is going to be fine. Now, this is going to stick up quite a bit. We may end up trimming it, and if we trim it, we can put the papers in the top. So, why don't we look at it in the book first? You would have thought I would have done that ahead of time. They're the same length, pretty much. This time it's a skosh taller. So let's put it in here. We're going to put the pretty side to the front, or the prettier side. You might want to print something different than something neutral on the back. I'm going to fix that glue spot. Slide it down in. Let's see how far it sticks out. Yeah, we are. Let's, um, oh, look at that. Well, let's have it stick out far enough that our wingtip shows. Or the tip of his head shows. Then we'll have to measure all the other envelopes against this one. See, if I'd have realized, I could have moved the image down if I'd have thought about it. My original plan was to put a piece of black cardstock on here um, just a little bit higher than the card and make a strip and cut it out to make it look like a castle um, turret but um, I'm not sure about that now and so if I change my mind I'll let you know because I'll just have to print out another one of these oh Silly me, why don't I just trim the bottom of the envelope? <sighs> oh, because then we can't use it to put the papers in and out. Okay, so we'll trim that off. Then we'll have to trim our papers. see and then we'll be able to fold one of our purpley blue papers and put it inside and that's going to match perfectly so you fold it into thirds just like you're putting it in a regular envelope put it inside the envelope and then trim the paper <coughs> or you can just measure it Make sure to cover up that purple this here and then see if this works okay let's switch to another video okay so let's trim this off Fold it into thirds. I never do this right. Yep, yeah, see, it's a little crooked. No, nope. there's a way to fix that. See how that works. Okay, let's ink this before we forget. And then now we can use this envelope as a template 
we can use these papers as a template as well. You have to be a little more careful inking this it's thinner paper than our cardstock, obviously. You can see a couple of wrinkles right there. Very, very delicate. They're not big wrinkles, or I would have done it over. Okay. So now let's put this towards the front. Let's put our paper inside. which is still too long. How can that be? There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's put this in the front. And see what it looks like. Oh, now we don't have to worry about it because Terry cut it a little short. So let's just just make it even with the front. So then we'll let's turn it around if it's going to be all that. Let's just turn it around. And do that. That worked out better anyway. Much easier. Okay, now on to page 10. Okay, page 10. Here's our paper, which we can't put on yet, even though we will be putting it on soon. This is our writing card. Oh, this is the paper for our pocket. And then this is the, um, we're going to paper the inside of the um, the pocket with that because we're going to turn it into a down, a down flap instead of leaving it as a pocket. Okay. Because this is going to go on the front, this image right here. So, the first thing we need to do is put our magnets on. Uh-huh. See what I mean about making sure they don't interfere with each other? It was a bit noisy. Let's put this one on first. Well, that wasn't very smart, was it? Then we'll take the other one. We'll put the piece of tape facing up. And then we'll place that magnet 
on the side that attracts and not repels on there like that and we'll fold it up and you just do this all around and it gets the tape to stick and then when you open it up the magnets up here ta-da okay now we can paper this which is going to look nice actually yeah we can everything else goes on the flap because we have a card mm -hmm. and this was a misprint on the bag I had already cut it and I tried to print on the back and I put it borderless but apparently when you make the size smaller you know you adjust the little brackets on either side in the tray on the printer then um, it won't allow you to print borderless so I ended up with a border which meant I couldn't flip it over This down over the magnet. Wow, that's not sliding at all. There you go, paper be that way. Okay, we got our magnet covered. Now we're going to do this one. Actually, let's do the front. We will get this one cut. See, that's going to look nice. Then we can actually use this to paper the inside. We don't have to use this at all. Take paper clips out, put paper clips back. Okay, let's ink it. I could have talked to you while I was doing that, except I had my pencil in my mouth. Ooh, disgusting. But I did it anyway, apparently. Apparently I have no regard for hygiene. Well, that didn't come out right, did it? Hygiene safety. I'm actually getting ready to recolor my hair today. So when I lean forward, you won't see the roots, which are white. <laughs> so I'm not telling how old I am. No, I'll tell you. 
I'm 60. Just I'll be 60 this year in August. So I'm 59 and three quarters. And it hasn't been that long since I first started doing this. Now, I want to put a tuck on here. And put it over here. So let's paper the back first. I want to put a tuck on the front and on the inside. This is my backup pencil, by the way. My regular pencil, which looks just like it. It's disappeared again. It has a mind of its own sometimes. It's probably on my computer desk. That's where it usually is. If it isn't here. Pretty good about keeping track of every single little thing in my apartment. However, when I'm working, sometimes the pencils roll off onto the floor, things like that. I managed to get the envelope that short. I really did want it to stick up a little bit. Um, so I'm not really sure what, what went on there. I must not have had it pushed all the way down into the pocket. That's the only thing I can think of. line it up with this. Looks like this is a little close to the edge. Let's make sure to hold it down right here. Oh, I see. My glue wasn't close enough to the edge. And what I was thinking when I was gluing that. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So now this will hold this shut. That will hold our uh, card, which I've already done. I've rounded the corners and done all that stuff and inked it on both sides. This is a page wide card. So, which this is the picture that matches, you know, I mean, it's not in the same spot or anything, but this is the same image as in the image in our window uh, flap. Well, which we ended up putting back here, somewhere here. So it's that same image, so it matches. So all we have to do now is just put this in here, and I have to figure out, remember, something to do on the backs. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but um, I'm going to have to do something. Okay. So now let's put a little tuck here, a little tuck here, a little tuck there.
because I do like the way that looks, but I don't want to, you know what we could do. We could put a piece of ephemera here and not put a tuck. No, let's put a tuck. We'll just make it narrower. We'll put some ephemera on the tuck if we need to. So let's ink this. Tucks are easy. You just cut out a rectangle. <laughs> now if you wanted to be fancy, you could run this through your big shot and put a, like a scallopy edge on. Or you could do like my friend Elizabeth, Elizabeth Riggle. She does lives over on uh, the... Junk Journal with Joy Facebook group. She's amazing. Um, famous bookmaker. And um, she can freehand cut just about anything. It's amazing. So we'll glue this on. Which way do we like it? I think I like the lighter edge. Closer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Means we do not want to glue this side. All right, glue. I've got gunk on the end. Okay, and then um, just put a tuck on the inside here on the same side so you don't cover up this decoration, and then you'll be done with that. Okay, so then you'll be done with page 10, you'll be done with page 5, and you'll be done with one of the envelopes for the inside. And then rinse and repeat for these. Okay? Just measure how long it is and make them all the same length. Or start over and have them stick out the top a little bit. Which I'm very tempted to do. It's just an envelope. I can use it for somewhere else in the, in the book, possibly. Okay? So that's it for this video. And I will see you in the next video. And that will be just a second for you and a day for me. Okay, bye-bye.